See, do you agree with me that our lives today as a generation of people has become far more comfortable and far more convenient simply because of our understanding of science and our exploitation of that knowledge as technology? Yes. Definitely. We are the most comfortable generation ever in the history of humanity, no question about it, isn't it? Yes. We are super empowered because of the science and technology. As there is a science and technology for our external well-being, there is a whole science and technology for inner well-being. Unfortunately, most cultures have ignored this and thinking that if we make all the external arrangements well, everything will be okay. United States of America is a huge statement that this is not how it works. The most affluent country on the planet, seventy percent of the population are supposed to be on prescription medication. See, when you understand life as a race, if you're in a race, what's the objective? You must reach the finish line quick, isn't it? Yes. What is the finish line of your life? Death. There you have it. This may not be a conscious process, but life within you is understanding it like that. When you… see, you must understand this, whether you are conscious, it of, conscious of it or not, any human being. Right now, if you make yourself miserable, you must understand you are sending a message to every cell in the body that I don't want to live. You might not have articulated it in your head yet, but when you become miserable, you notice suddenly your body seems heavy and it's like, doesn't want to get up from this chair. Have you seen this? Yes. When you're happy, you're willing to bounce at everything and do everything, bend backwards if necessary. Why this is happening is the message has gone to every cell in the body, this guy wants to die. They're all thinking, okay, what can we do to help him? But by then, of course, you recover. So you want to die, you want to live, you want to die, you want to live. The body is getting confused because you must understand this is a very intelligent body. It's taking instructions from you. Every cell in the body has enormous sense of memory and intelligence. If you keep sending wrong messages, if they act, you're dead. Because you're sending contradictory messages, you're not dead, you're half dead. You can give it any number of exotic names. Essentially, you have turned your intelligence against yourself. This is supposed to work for you, but now you've turned it against yourself, it's working against you. Let's say we turn off all the lights. If the lights are on, you can whistle and just walk around wherever you want in this building. We'll turn off all the lights and make it pitch dark where you can't even see your own hand, like that. Now, every step that you take, will you take it in? At most alertness, will you be fully awake or asleep? Fully awake. Fully awake, why? Because you don't know where's the next step. Mm. Just to live like this. If you simply live like this, naturally you are on the highway to enlightenment. Everybody assume and believe because it's comfortable to simply believe something. The very word belief means this that I have concrete, concretized assumptions of which I know nothing about, isn't it? Mm. Isn't it so? Yeah. Either you know or you do not know. Where does the belief come from? When you pretend what you do not know as I know, that's belief. But you can't believe something all by yourself. So you need a hundred people around you. That's why always believers are in groups, Seekers are alone. Talk to me about a seeker. What What is a seeker? Is that something useful to cultivate? You don't have to cultivate this. This is intrinsic to human intelligence. If you do not bulk yourself with all kinds of things that you do not know as you know, it's intrinsic to human intelligence to seek, isn't it? Mm, yes. You don't have to teach seeking. You have to teach belief systems. You don't have to teach seeking. If you don't teach anything, everybody is a seeker. It is the nature of human intelligence, it naturally seeks. But people want to seek with the comfort of belief. 
They want to be in the belief system and then seek. This is like tying your boat to the pier and then rowing hard. See, people are, have divided the universe. This is important, this is not important. This person is important for me, this person is not important for me. This is important for me, that's not important for me. You divided the universe, you will never know anything this way. Indiscriminate focus, indiscriminate attention. I am not attending to you because you are somebody with a cobra in your heart, all right? It doesn't matter who I speak to, who I am with, I am the same way, indiscriminate. Only when your attention and involvement is indiscriminate does the universe open up to you. You have discriminated, naturally you close. You know, people come to me and say, Sadhguru, I want to walk the spiritual path. I say, okay, be here for three days, let's see what we can do. So, no Sadhguru, day after tomorrow, my uncle's daughter's birthday, I have to go. Oh, you want to get enlightened? and day after tomorrow, uncle's daughter's birthday also, all right, we got one and a half days. You do one thing, you do this, this and this. I say, Sadhguru, but I don't like this. All right, I'll give them a small piece of paper and say, okay, write down things that you like, we'll do only do, do that. But we won't believe it, in this entire universe, most people like only three or four things. When <laughs> You are so constipated in your head that you lack only three or four people or three or four things in your life. How do you want to open up to the existence? Because life is happening because of its openness. This is the fundamental difference between death and life is, people are thinking it's just breath, all right, on one level. That is also openness. Whether you allow this to happen or you don't allow it to happen, whether you did it consciously or unconsciously, but it's happening, isn't it? Openness is on every subatomic particle, is in communication with everything. That's why this is going on. Breath is happening, so much is happening in connection with everything. It is only in openness you're alive. As you close doors, you are dying in installments. Dying in installments is torture. See, life is fantastic if you're alive and fully alive. This may sound very not so compassionate, but I'm saying everybody dies, you and me will die, all right? If you're dead, it's the game is over. But if you're half dead, oh, this is endless torture to yourself. When you are being tortured, of course you'll share it with everybody else. Fundamentally, if people understand that the source of human experience is within you, joy or misery, agony or ecstasy, pleasure or pain, everything comes from within you. If you understand this much, if I understand, suppose right now I think I'm miserable because of you, there's no solution for my life, isn't it? Because all you have to do is walk in front of my home, I will become miserable. <laughs> so simple it is, you don't have to kill me, you just have to walk around in front of me, I will die within myself every day. If I understand the source of my joy and misery are within me, then you know what's the obvious choice? Joy. Obvious choice, isn't it? Mm. So this one fundamental thing has to get across to all the human beings on this planet. Your experience is entirely determined by you. This is what the word karma means, unfortunately. Mm. It's become something else here. Karma means action. That means, when we say your life is your karma, we are saying your life is entirely your making, hundred percent. What happens in the world, there are many, many forces involved. What happens within me, it's one hundred percent me, hundred percent, isn't it? Yes. If you don't take charge of this, then you're an accidental life. When you're an accidental life, anxiety is very natural. So this is why consciousness means this, that you have taken charge of the instruments of life, which on most fundamental level is our physiological and psychological space. You have taken charge of this. Now your health, your happiness, your joy, your ecstasy, your misery, everything is in your hands. You exercise them as you want. <laughs>